Hi everyone, this is Victor here. Welcome to the Intelligent Investor channel. Many subscribers recently asked me to make a stock analysis video about C Limited SE stock because many subscribers want to know where the C Limited stock is still a buy. C Limited stock did drop as much as 15.55% recently between the peak on February 19th, 2021 and April 1st, 2021. C was one of the best performing stocks in 2020. So for example, the stock increased as much as 430% in the past 12 months. The stock also increased 1,354% since its IPO in October 2017. The important questions are, is C-Limited stock still a buy and what is C-Limited's fair interest value? I'm going to answer these questions in this video. So in this video, I'm going to cover these topics. First, I'm going to talk about C-Limited's company overview. Then I will talk about C's online gaming business called Garena. After that, I'm going to talk about C's Shopee e-commerce business. Afterward, I'm going to talk about C's third most important business called C Money. It's digital financial services or it's fintech business. Before the end of the video, I'm going to talk about C's competition and risk. I will also talk about C's intrinsic value calculation, whether C is currently fairly valued, overvalued, or undervalued. By the end of the video, I'm going to talk about am I going to buy C stock. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe, and turn on the notification button. I will continue to make many excellent stock analysis and commentary videos every week that will help you become a great investor. Let's start. First, in terms of company overview, C Limited is still in the early growth stage. For example, C's 2020 full-year revenue grew 101% compared with 2019. Also, C's management expects that C's Shopee e-commerce revenue will double in 2021. C Limited is still losing money every quarter because C Limited is still in the early growth stage, just like Amazon in the beginning when Amazon was actually losing money every quarter and not generating any profits or not generating any free cash flow. So what this means is that we should not expect C Limited to be making any profits and free cash flow anytime soon. C has three major businesses. First, it's Garena Online Mobile Gaming Business. Second, it's Shopee e-commerce business. Third, it's C Money Digital Financial Services or its fintech business. You may not know this, but C Limited is backed by Tencent Holdings, the largest internet company in China, even bigger than Alibaba. At the time of making this video, C's 2020 annual report is not out yet. But according to C's 2019 annual report, Tencent Holdings owns approximately 25.6% of C Limited. Firstly, the founder and CEO of C Limited and Tencent Holdings control approximately 63.9% of the total voting power in C. What this means is that both Forest Lee and Tencent Holdings have pretty much all the controls of C Limited. Personally, I believe it's very important to understand C's three major growth businesses. If you want to predict whether or not C will continue to grow going forward, and if you want to predict C's current intrinsic value per share. C's first most important growth business is its Garena online mobile gaming business or its digital entertainment business. C's digital entertainment business contributes the most revenue and operating income for C. C's Garena is a leading gaming publisher and developer in Southeast Asia. Garena also hosts Garena esports tournaments around the world, especially its Free Fire esports mobile game. Free Fire is Garena's most popular self-developed game. It's also the most popular battle royale game in Southeast Asia right now. It's almost the same as Player Unknown's PUBG's Battleground. Now, here is the very important part about C's digital entertainment business or its Garena business. C's Free Fire mobile game contributes the most active user base growth and revenue growth for C right now. Garena also published other very popular games from other developers, including League of Legends, Call of Duty Mobile, and Arena of Wilder. League of Legends is the most popular mobile multiplayer online battle arena game in the world owned by Tencent Holdings. Call of Duty Mobile is the most popular online mobile shooter game right now. It also has a very popular battle royale game mode. It's developed by Tencent Holdings. If you look at here, you can see that C's digital entertainment business is C's only business that makes an operating profit. In comparison, C's Shopee e-commerce and digital finances businesses are still losing money every quarter. Mobile gaming is a huge trend in Asia right now, especially in less developed countries in Southeast Asia. Because everyone spends more time on their mobile phones, 
than on their desktop computers. Online mobile gaming such as esports will continue to grow for many years, especially in Asia. According to the latest Q4 2020 earnings, C's digital entertainment gaming business gap revenue was 693.4 million up 71.6% year over year. CIS management gave this 2021 guidance. CIS management expects that its digital entertainment is booking to be between 4.3 billion and 4.5 billion in 2021, up 38.1% year over year growth at midpoint. C's second most important growth business is Shopee e-commerce business. As of now, Shopee is the biggest e-commerce marketplace platform in Southeast Asia. Taiwan and Brazil. Shopee operates in Indonesia, Taiwan, Vietnam, Thailand, Philippines, Malaysia, Singapore, and Brazil. Shopee is another large revenue contributor to C right now, but it's still losing a lot of money every quarter. Shopee was initially launched as an app first, which is Shopee's mobile first strategy. This is because most internet users in Southeast Asia spend many more hours on their mobile phones than on their desktop computers. Shopee is slightly ahead of Alibaba's Lazada, which is Shopee's biggest rival in Southeast Asia right now. According to this article here, Shopee had 197.8 million monthly visitors compared with Lazada's 161.7 million monthly visitors. Shopee is backed by Tencent Holdings while Lazada is backed by Alibaba. According to this CNBC article here, the reported predicted Southeast Asia's internet sectors could witness strong growth and hit 100 billion in gross merchandise value GMV in 2020, with e commerce registering a 63% growth. Overall, the region's internet sectors remain on track to cross 300 billion in GMV by 2025. That prediction was first made last year before the coronavirus pandemic. According to a study by Google and Tamasa, C's average usage of mobile internet is the highest among regions 3.6 hours per person a day. In spite of the growth in e-commerce in the region, online retail constitutes less than 2.5% of C's entire retail and accounts for only 1% of the total retail sales. As of now, Southeast Asia has approximately 674 million population compared with US 331 million population. And there are approximately 400 million internet users in Southeast Asia. E-commerce in Southeast Asia is still in the early growth stage. So we can expect that e-commerce sales as a percentage of total retail sales will continue to grow in Southeast Asia, which will benefit Shopee. According to the latest Q4 2020 earnings, e-commerce business gap revenue was 842.2 million, up 178.3% year on year. C's management gave this 2021 guidance. C's management expects that its e commerce revenues to be between 4.5 billion and 4.7 billion, up 112.3% year over year growth at midpoint in 2021. C's third up and coming growth business is its C Money or its digital financial services, FinTech business. C Money's main products include Shopee Pay, which is a mobile wallet payment service, which is similar to PayPal, as well as Shopee Pay Late, which is buy now pay later service, and also Shopee Seller Financing, which focuses on micro-sized and small-sized lending for small businesses in Southeast Asia. As of now, C's digital financial business or C Money contributes very little value to C overall. This uh, business still lose a lot of money every quarter. C is still investing aggressively to make C money or its digital financial services business into its third growth business. For example, C is starting a capital management investment business, investing in other tech companies and other startups. This is from C's Q4 2020 earnings. I'm also pleased to share that C has completed the acquisition of Composite Capital, a leading investment management firm funded and led by David Ma. David will serve as the chief investment officer of C Capital and will report directly to me. C Capital will focus on identifying, partnering with, and investing in technology companies that share our vision of bettering the lives of consumers and small businesses through technology. By investing into the growth of our broader ecosystem, we believe C Capital can help accelerate the growth of the overall digital economy and create 
Real and lasting value for our users, business partners, and communities. In line with this commitment, we are allocating an initial one billion for C capital to deploy in the upcoming years. We believe the addition of the composite team and the establishment of C capital will further enhance our investment and capital allocation capabilities in support of C's long-term growth strategies. This is from CNBC. It shows. One of the biggest trends in Southeast Asia right now that I believe will benefit C Limited's digital financial services business. According to CNBC, digital financial services are gaining momentum as more small and medium sized businesses have become receptive to accepting online payments. Digital payments are set to grow from 600 billion in 2019 to 620 billion in 2020, as the average number of cash transactions for and could reach 1.2 trillion by 2025. Digital payments as defined in the report include mobile wallets, account-to-account -account transfers, and credit and debit cards. Personally, I believe that C money will eventually become a large revenue growth business for C in the future. But it's going to take them a long time, maybe 5 to 10 years for C money or C's digital financial services business to become a huge revenue contributor. Before investing in anything, it's also important to consider the risks. The first major risk for C is that there's a lot of competition in e-commerce in Southeast Asia. Shopee's biggest competitor is Alibaba's Lazada. I said this earlier before, Shopee currently has a monthly visitors of 197 point million compared with Lazada's 161.7 million. There are also other e-commerce competitors that are a lot more localized and focus on each country or region in Southeast Asia. For example, there's the Tokopedia, which has 72.4 million monthly visitors in Indonesia, which is the biggest country in Southeast Asia. The second risk for C is that C's Free Fire Battle Royale game contributes the most active user base growth and earnings to C's digital entertainment business right now. Free Fire is a self-developed game by C. C does not need to share Free Fire's revenue with other game developers. There are also other very popular mobile battle royale games, including Players Unknown's Battleground, PUBG Mobile, and Call of Duty Mobile. There's also Fortnite Battle Royale game that's banned from Apple App Store and Google Play Store. You almost have to be a gamer to know whether C's Free Fire Battle Royale mobile game will continue to be very popular in the long run. The third major risk is that C is still losing money every quarter. C is still in the early growth stage. This means that C has to reinvest most of its capital into its business in order for it to grow its revenue and net profit over the long run. So this is similar to Amazon in the early growth stage. But it also means that if C cannot generate enough cash or enough capital to reinvest into its business, C has to issue more shares or issue more notes in order to reinvest into its three major businesses I mentioned earlier. What I'm trying to say is that we shouldn't expect C to have gap profit anytime soon and we shouldn't expect C to have free cash flow growth anytime soon. If C does not generate enough capital from its operating business, C has to issue more shares and issue more convertible notes that will dilute C's current shares outstanding. Now I want to talk about C's intrinsic value calculation or C's fair intrinsic value. I believe that it's important to know if C stock is overvalued, fairly valued or undervalued right now. I believe it's important to always have a margin of safety before investing in anything. I define C's intrinsic value as its future cash flow discounted to the present day. Because C Limited is still in the early growth stage and C has to reinvest most of its capital into its business to grow further. C does not have any free cash flow yet. So therefore, we have to use C's operating cash flow instead of C's free cash flow to try to estimate C's fair interest value right now. So I want to show you my interest value calculation spreadsheet right here. I made three key assumptions in my interest value calculation spreadsheet right here. The first key assumption is that I'm assuming that C will be able to grow at about 50% to 100% growth rate each year for the next five years. The second assumption is that we're using a discount rate of 9.2% WAC from Finbox. The third assumption is that to calculate C's 
determined value at the end of year five, we're using a reasonable 16.92 price to cash flow multiple from Morningstar to calculate the determined value at the end of year five. We have to use Amazon as a comparable to find a reasonable 16.92 price to cash flow multiple to calculate C's determined value at the end of year five. I want to show you my interest value calculation special right here. There are three case scenarios. The worst case scenario with a growth rate of 50% each year, the normal case scenario with a growth rate of 75% each year, and the best case scenario with a growth rate of 100% each year. Under the worst case scenario, we're assuming a 50% growth rate each year over the next five years. If we project C's operating cash flow over the next five years and then discount it to the present day using a 9.2% discount rate, then C's interest value of the entire company should be approximately 50 billion. And in terms of interest value per share, it should be around $85 per share. I'm giving this a probability of 33%. Under the normal case scenario, with a growth rate of 75% each year over the next five years, if we project C's operating cash flow to the next five years and then discount it to the present day using the discount rate of 9.2%, then C's interest value of the entire company should be around 105 billion US dollars. Then if we divide this by its average shares outstanding, then its intrinsic value should be around $178 per share. I'm also giving this a probability of 33%, which is one third. Under the best case scenario with a 100% growth rate each year for the next five years, if we project the operating cash flow over the next five years and discount it to the present day using a 9.2% discount rate, then C's interest value of the entire company should be around $202 billion or $341 per share. For me, this is a very optimistic case scenario and I'm giving this a probability of 33% uh, or one third. So if we multiply all these three case scenarios by their probabilities of one third each, then C Limited's intrinsic value of the entire company should be around $119 billion compared with its current $122.857 billion US dollars market cap as of April 1st, 2021. Then if we divide this by the weighted average shares outstanding, then C Limited's fair interest rate per share should be approximately $201 per share compared with its current stock price of $236.45 per share as of April 1st, 2021. So am I buying C Limited stock? I bought C stock around six months ago before making this video. It represents about 2.34% of my stock portfolio. I am planning to hold my C stock for many years, just like my Amazon stock. I would likely buy more C stock if the stock price drops way below its fair interest value. So there will be a margin of safety. Personally, I believe C fair interest value is around 119 billion US dollars in market cap as a whole company or 201 dollars per share. C stock can be very volatile. It can drop as much as 10% or more in any given day. Now, all of these are only my opinions and analysis based on my research. You will have to do your own research and do your own due diligence first. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe, and turn on the notification button. I will continue to make many excellent stock analysis and commentary videos every week that will help you become a great investor. This is Victor from the Intelligent Investor channel. Thank you for watching and I will see you in my next video.